Being a firefighter has never been an easy job. 911, what's your emergency? But everywhere across the country, these jobs are getting harder. In Alberta, emergency calls have increased dramatically in the last five years, and there are not enough paramedics to respond. That means firefighters are dealing with more and more medical problems, sometimes on the scene long before an ambulance. I wanted to know how they're coping in rural communities, where the system is especially strapped for resources. So I traveled with a crew to a few small towns in rural Alberta, and I saw firsthand what they face. I traveled to Bonneville, a town two and a half hours northeast of Edmonton. When we arrived, I wasn't sure if they'd get many calls. Bonneville is a town of about 6,000 people. But within minutes, there was a call. What do you know at this point? So we don't know at this point. All we do know is that we are heading to a vehicle collision. Just got a show Charlie one on scene. Yeah, Two vehicle back. incident uh, in between the uh, Bonneville Hotel and uh, Sylvester's. So it's on uh, 50th Street, not on the other. It turned out to be a collision between two cars on an icy road downtown. One ambulance arrived quickly, but since a few people were injured, they were waiting on another one. If all the ambulances in our community are tied up with other calls or transfers, then they would be coming from um, the, nearest, the nearest community. That means paramedics could be coming from a block away, or if there isn't one available in town, an hour away. And that's not uncommon. Luckily, that day, the wait was short. But that doesn't make the work easy. One of our first responding paramedics, uh, as she was coming up to the scene, uh, realized that her daughter was involved in the incident. Um, so that, that obviously takes a little bit of focus away from the entirety of, of the incident. And, uh, and it, it very much personalizes things for our responders. Uh, most, most of our folks, uh, you know, either born and raised here or been here a long time, uh, so they, they know lots of the people in the community and that, that uh, puts them in a position where uh, they can struggle sometimes. The next morning, we traveled to Glendon, which is just over two hours northeast of Edmonton, and it's a much smaller town, a population of 500 people, and the firefighters there are 100% volunteers. So odds are good in a medical emergency, the firefighters will know the person they're helping. While on their way to this scene, the firefighters found out that the woman inside the truck was the wife of one of their crew who was on his way there. My heart sunk when, yeah. when Don got a hold of me. Yeah. I don't know how bad it is. I, like, I don't know what state he's at. And well, it's never fun. It turns out the one who was in the truck is this woman named Allie Backer and it was her husband, Josh, who was on his way as a firefighter to the scene. And I did get a chance to talk to them after, and Allie is recovering from some pain in her back, but she did turn out to be okay. Josh said the crew brought them flowers in the hospital, and another firefighter even lent them a car. And in a small community, these personal connections can be a blessing, but it can also take a toll. There are times that we might be doing CPR for 15, 20 minutes, and that just physically exhausting, but also uh, when you're doing something like that, especially with somebody that, even if it's not a family member, somebody you know who they are, that can have quite a mental strain on people while you're waiting and waiting for EMS to arrive on scene. Sometimes we're sitting with family members. Sometimes we're the, in some ways, we're the first counselors on scene too, in a way. And so we have to be prepared and ready. Um, just like I said, not just for the physical toll of 20 minutes of CPR, but just the, the emotional toll of, of working with uh, people that, that live and work with us. In Canada, 80% of firefighters are volunteers. That's the case at the Bonneville Fire Station, where most of the members are volunteering on top of their full-time jobs. And being on call for an emergency is just the expectation. That's just the way it is. You carry your radio, your pager, depending on what you have. And you either drop in dinner if you're starting to eat, or, you know, drop in whatever you're doing that day and come in here to go do your duties. 
Uh, myself, I was picking up the trailer I used for hauling water for my cistern. Uh, luckily, it wasn't hooked up yet, so coming here was uh, not too bad. Uh, Stone, I think he was on his way to the gym, so instead of going to the gym, he came here. And uh, McCutcheon was just getting off work uh, about a block from the scene of the accident, so instead of going home, came to the fire hall here. Legs just fit. These volunteers are taking on more and more work. That's part of why it's become such a concern for municipalities. Alberta emergency calls rose nearly 40% in the last five years, but ambulances are not just tied up with emergencies. In Bonneville, about half of what ambulances do is transport patients to medical care in bigger cities like Edmonton when that's not available closer to home. It's not uncommon that an ambulance is used to take somebody that, you know, except for the fact that they, they need some care, could almost drive themselves, um, but they, they would get sent by an ambulance. These trips can be for routine procedures like a CT scan or a visit to a specialist. Last year alone, paramedics in Alberta did over 176,000 interfacility transfers. That works out to 482 of these trips per day. So in Bonneville, every day, one out of three ambulances is on the road driving to a different city, meaning they can't be available when there's an emergency here. But we have to remember what the original intent behind an ambulance is. And, and you look at the name, the, that EMS, right? It's emergency medical services. And, and that's ultimately, I think, the, the part that uh, there's a lot of folks in the province that are frustrated over the, the stress and strain that the ambulance system is under right now. Uh, there's just, they're so busy. The Alberta government has promised to contract out some of these non-emergency transfers to drivers who aren't paramedics that would address some of the growing pressures on firefighters in rural communities. Earlier this year, they asked for proposals to divert as many as 44,000 of these trips to other drivers. But these contracts would only apply to Edmonton and Calgary, not rural communities. At the same time, some of the firefighters are now getting MFR training, otherwise known as medical first responders. The idea is that they are equipped with more skills to handle medical emergencies before an ambulance gets there. For communities like Glendon, uh, Goodridge, um, those areas there, they're, uh, they're a ways away. They're, we're 40 minutes, lights and sirens. So um, it's, it's of great benefit to have the MFRs out there. But with fewer paramedics graduating from schools in recent years and continuing shortages system-wide, Many say that mounting pressure on firefighting volunteers will continue, which is why psychological services has become a top priority in Bonneville and departments all over the country, given that the number one reason first responders take time away from work is trauma and stress. Mm -hmm.